Welcome to Computer Science. This is Mr. Wilson, your instructor and guide as we take a closer look at computer science. Rules for the road. You've never really taken a class like this, so get ready and hang on. What are we going to do in this class? Well, um, this class is very different than any class you've taken before. My name's Mr. Wilson, and uh, in this class, um, you know, for example, one of the first things, a lot of times, if you have a question, uh, we're going to say, hey, did you Google it? Have you looked it up? Have you asked the people around you? And that's very different than what goes on down the hallway or in other classrooms. So let's kind of get used to this whole idea of that we're going to do things differently in this class than we have been doing. So let's say, just like we were saying, for example, if you've got a question, most of the time we work as teams. And actually, it's called Agile Teams. And I'm going to explain that further depending on which class you're in, how that's actually going to function and how that's going to work. But most of the time, you're going to have four to five people on your team. And in that Agile team, you'll be able to work together. So some people are going to be good at one thing. Some people are going to be better at another thing. And so you'll be able to use everybody's strengths in there. Uh, you won't be able to basically be a log, you know, do nothing and hope that the rest of the team pulls your grade along. Um, uh, that's not going to work out for you. And probably, really truthfully, you ought to look for another class if that's the way you like to do things. Um, Really, we're talking about also um, in not just going ahead and going online and looking up answers and doing that, but also asking all the people on your team. Because if one student can already do it, I want you to be able to feel free to be able to ask them how to do it. So we're talking about look it up. And reason why I teach you the look it up method of learning is because most of the time in business or in other places as a software developer um, or even as a technology specialist, you're going to have to be able to teach yourself new technologies. Mr. Wilson won't be there in five years to show you the newest way to be able to use the cloud or to be able to make uh, your newest iPhone 28 work. So it's very important that you learn to teach yourself. Hey, and if we're doing exercises and someone's project is working, you know, really truthfully, the problem's not your computer. Or it's not really the way I told you how to do it. Um, it's just flat that really something's wrong with, your, with what you did. And so go ahead and kind of get that in your mind. There's times you're going to do things wrong, and it's okay. It's not the computer. It's not the software. It's probably you. You probably did something wrong. Go ahead and go figure it out and go ahead and fix it. Um, you know, I want you to fail small here. And that way, when you get into the workplace, uh, it's not as big a deal. You'll be able to not only fail, be, but be able to handle it and fix it on your own. So one of the things about failing that people get wrong all the time is, uh, you know, you're not going to know how to do everything in this class. Uh, you didn't know how to tie your shoes when you first started to do it. It was hard. You had to learn how to do it. And it's okay to say, I need help or to be able to work with the people on your team. Um, it's not excusable to get mad, okay? So if you feel like you're really, really getting mad, you're getting really upset, you may need to stand up. You may need to take a second, go get a drink, do something like that. Uh, and walk it off. Um, using foul language uh, because you're mad is never acceptable and um, that will require me to take action. Um, and so um, being able to say that you can't do it, uh, that's not acceptable either. So those are things, just go ahead and put them out of your mind. That's not the way that we're going to handle failure here in the class. We're going to expect to fail. You know, I'm going to say a lot of times, you're going to hear me say it, fail fast, and it's okay uh, to fail, to not be good at something. That's how you get good at something. Um, if you don't ever quit, you'll never be a quitter. So never tell me you're going to quit. Don't ever, you know, uh, like I said, just that whole getting upset thing because you failed, you've got to quit. 
uh, or you've got to not quit and really get in there and just uh, lay yourself out. It's okay to not be good at stuff. Um, hopefully somebody else on your team is. So you'll have the opportunity to really become good with technology. In some cases, if you're in my 3R blocks, you're going to become more of a software engineer and a programmer. Um, I'm going to expose you to a lot of things. And if you're in my intro to technology class, you're going to ex get ex exposed to a lot of new technologies and do things online, do things on your phone, do things like that that you probably haven't experienced before. If you're in my computer programming classes, you're going to see here a whole list, but this list is not only things we're going to learn, but C Sharp and Java, Unity, um, it says Unit on there, that's not correct. Unity, which is a game engine, um, Amazon Web Services, HTML, the cloud, all of the things that are out there in the cloud, that's part of that Amazon Web Service piece. Um, computer troubleshooting, how to handle a computer when you're having problems with it, and a lot of other things that we learn here in this class. It's what makes this class uh, so much fun, is that we're not tied to ancient technology or old ways of thinking. Um, why is this class really different? Well, first thing is attitude. Um, students in my class have a completely different attitude than you're going to find in most classes. Um, in other classes, you may have had somebody who was the troublemaker or the jokester who's always trying to break the class up so that you don't get any work done. And the reason why most people do that is because they're not capable of handling the work. Uh, I ask for a level of maturity in this class. I treat you with respect. I expect you to treat me with respect. Let's just talk about that for a second. First thing, it's how we talk to each other. Um, I do not expect you, uh, or I, I will not put up with you um, talking down to each other or um, treating somebody badly verbally in my class because you think it's funny. Um, we won't put up with that at all. Um, the other thing that I find that you know you kind of have to get used to is foul language. You can't use any foul language in here. Um, you know, I spent nine years in the Army. I've heard every foul word there is. Um, you cannot surprise me with that. Um, but you will not use it in here. This is a professional atmosphere, and so I will expect you to uh, act that way. I expect you to act like young adults while you're in my classroom. So the other thing is, is in talking, I definitely expect you to respect me. Um, if that's a problem for you, you're in the wrong class. So uh, you'll never call me just by my last name. In fact, even when you're outside of this class, I never want you to refer to me just by my last name or by definitely not by my first name. Uh, I am, I'm pretty old, I've been around, I've been a lot of different places, including uh, serving uh, a long time in the military. I think I deserve uh, the respect to be called Mr. Wilson or call me Sir. You can pick e either one of those, um, but definitely not, um, not uh, just Wilson or something like that. And never, ever, ever call me dude or bro or any of the other slangs that you might use with your friends. I'm not your friend. I'm your instructor and, uh, and your mentor. And I expect you to treat me that way. And I'm going to treat you uh, as one of my programmers and as a young adult. Um, you won't find me calling you kids or things like that while you're in my classroom. Um, work, that's part of your attitude. I expect you to come in and work. And, uh, and we work hard in this class. And my students are well known for working harder than any other students in the rest of the school. People, in fact, substitutes love to come and sub in my room because my students get right to work and know what to do. Uh, there aren't any questions about what they're going to do or how they're going to do it. They already know the drill. They know how, what to do and how to knock it out. And uh, it's why my students go on to do some really cool things, not only here uh, in, uh, in high school, but after they graduate, they go on to do some really great things. 
uh, lab work. Uh, I've got cheating on there. And a lot of you are going to say cheating is when I copy off my neighbor's work. Well, in, in programming in code, um, if you're stuck someplace, and I mean stuck, you've tried it and you can't get through it, um, to use your, uh, for you to show somebody how you coded it uh, is not cheating, okay? But that's in lab work. It's not on tests. It's not on, you know, a quiz or something like that. But in lab work, I expect you to work together. Uh, music, while you're working in lab work and you're coding, uh, you can listen to your own music um, on your phone or off my computers. I will probably have music playing uh, so you can listen to my music or you can do that, okay? Um, if, if we are in class time and I am working and teaching you or we're having instruction, uh, you can't use your phones. Uh, you should set your phone aside and put it down. If I have to ask you more than a few times, um, you know, hey, that just means you're so addicted to your phone you can't get away from it, and uh, I'll probably have you set it on my desk or something like that, okay? Um, snacks and drinks, when you're working in labs, I do not mind if you have your own drink, if you have your own snacks, if you leave a mess, uh, I will cancel those privileges. It's a privilege. Uh, it's, not, it's not something you're guaranteed in my class, but I let my students during lab times uh, drink or snack. Um, don't leave stuff on my floor, do not leave packages, always clean up after yourself. There is no maid. Uh, do not expect our, uh, our janitorial people to clean up after you. Um, I, I, uh, I will just take those privileges away. And I really would like to give you those privileges. So it's good for you to bring your own um, glass with a lid uh, to drink out of um, while you're doing that. And um, so that's just a good thing to kind of keep in mind. Um, st stay busy. You know, you should always really truthfully be working in whatever. Um, there's never going to be really a time that you're just going to be able to stop and say, I don't have anything to do, okay? Um, the other side of stay busy um, is that um, there will be times when, uh, let's say we've had a long week and we really put in some hard work, you guys have been really been at it, and, um, you know, it's just been a long week altogether. And I will give you free time. If I give you free time, sometimes I will say, stay busy. That means that you are to be doing something. That does not, there's no, there's no sleeping. Uh, I don't want you simulating sleep. Uh, that means laying your head down or acting like you're tired and, you know, just being uh, not doing anything. Uh, during that stay busy time, you can talk with people. You can, uh, you know, get on the computers and search the internet, watch YouTube videos, play games, do those kinds of things. Um, but you can't, you can't sleep. There is no sleeping in my classroom. They won't let me take a nap, uh, so I won't let you take a nap either. Um, bathrooms. Um, I don't I don't require you to ask me if you can go to the bathroom. You really know whether you need to go to the bathroom or not. Um, Mr. Wilson does not. So um, instead of you saying, may I go to the bathroom, ask if you're asking me permission, just say, uh, Mr. Wilson, I'm going to the bathroom. Now that means I don't want uh, two or three people leaving the room at the same time. Only one at a time. You have to wait till the last till the person who just left comes back um, because that's that's a sign of trouble if there's several people out. If you're in my three hour block, we have breaks. Um, and during those breaks, I, I really do expect you to, to use the bathroom during those breaks. Um, if you if you're uh, if you're going to the bathroom every day, every day, every day, then there's a problem and uh, I'll probably need to send you to the nurse so that you can get that figured out what the problem is. Uh, we call that frequent flyers um, and generally uh, the person is actually has no medical problem whatsoever, but a lot of times people are just doing it to avoid work and to get out of class. And so if that's the case, you probably don't want to be in this class anyway. You need to be someplace else. Uh, grades, I base grades on how hard you work. If you work hard and you have a little trouble keeping up and doing those things, you're still going to get a pretty good grade in this class, okay? Um, I, I really 
Um, I, I don't like uh, giving low grades. And if I give you a low grade um, more than, uh, if you get below a C, a C or below, uh, more than a couple times, uh, we're probably going to be talking about your future. Okay, we'll be talking about whether or not you should be in this class and whether you should be someplace else. Um, because it just really truthfully means you're not trying. Um, so uh, I'm looking for A's and B's. A's and B's are actually what we're shooting for. Um, and, um, you know, so that's really what I have to say about that. If you're making C's, uh, you're, you're probably in a bad place and we, we really need to talk about your future and where you're going. A lot of your grades is based on per participation. Um, if you come in here and every day you're tired and you're not keeping up because you're just not doing the work, once again, uh, we'll be talking about your future and uh, where you are and what you need to be doing uh, to be successful in life. And it may not be to be in this classroom, it may to be uh, someplace else. So you might keep that in mind. Those are kind of some of the ground rules for being in Mr. Wilson's class. Um, hopefully nobody has to watch this video. This video is designed for um, if you're not in the first day of class, but uh, it is also as a review for all of those who are in class and they want to go back and kind of check some of the things I've I've uh, I've said so. Let's up plan on having some fun. Um, this class can be a lot of fun. Uh, if you work hard, you do what I tell you to, you're going to be very, very happy because your future is going to be bright. Uh, it's going to be very bright. My average student who goes through uh, my program and then goes off to college uh, in computer programming um, start off making between 50 and 70 plus thousand dollars a year. Um, so uh, that's a great place to be um, and I can show you that route and uh, but you've got to work hard and have fun at it and do things um, unlike what other students do. Thank you very much, and I look forward to having you in class. Uh, have a great day.